Coming in hot from Arizona, this is Trevor and Troy Howard, and you're on So Tell Us Time. You can have everything you want in your business. Sometimes you just need a little help. Every business owner would love to charge more for their services, but sometimes you can sacrifice long-term loyalty for a short-term profit. Creating the right rituals is key to your business having success. Are you tired of competing with your competitors? Guess what? You don't have to compete if you create. Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of So Tell Us Time. Today we're going to be talking about a really good one. Today we're talking about obligation elimination. As business owners, we are often super busy. Yes. We're wearing multiple hats. We're running around. A lot of times we feel like we're putting out fires and then we run from this fire to the next fire to the next fire to the next fire. We're busy and that is just the life of an entrepreneur. Now, one of the things that makes that happen that doesn't necessarily have to happen (laughs) is this internal entrepreneurial feeling that we have of obligation. Yeah. You got to take every job. You got to do, you know, take on every client, right? Whether it's good for you or not. And so having these obligations or feeling this feeling of obligation of taking on everything creates more fires in our lives that we don't necessarily right yeah. have to have so we're gonna be talking about that a little bit more of being able to maybe say no when it's not the right situation or the right client or the right job and let's jump into it go ahead Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about obligation elimination instead of time management. We've talked about time management in the past, you know, how to manage your time, how to schedule your day, how to get more things done. But today we're talking about saying no, right? And how that can be a great way to manage your time. Um, There's a quote that I really like. It says, there is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should not be done at all. <laughs> a lot of times we pat ourselves on the back and we're like, oh man, I got that done and I did so good and I did it so fast and it was totally worthless. Yeah, it did nothing for it. Didn't you. benefit us all. And that's what that quote is saying there. So the most, one of the most effective ways to claw back your time is to say no to things that don't matter. Right. Right? And that might be a job, right? Well, I don't, I don't want to jump ahead. I don't want to jump ahead. I'm going <laughs> to steal from you. I'm, I know. I'm going to do it. Go ahead. Well, let's first let's talk about why we struggle with saying no. Because, you know, for a lot of us out there, it is. It's really hard to say no. And there's a couple of reasons why. The first one is FOMO. <laughs> good old fear of missing out. Yeah. So we're afraid that we might miss out on some great opportunity with our business. Yep. Yep. That we're just like, I, I've got to take everything on. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, oh man, this client, I really don't like this guy. I think it's going to be a headache. But, you know, maybe it turns into something awesome. The money's good. And and he says he knows a lot of people. We get this one all the time. (laughs) I know so many people. I know so many business owners. I'm going to refer so much business to you. Yep. Oh, my gosh. I get You want to know how many times that works out when, and I'm talking about going into it knowing that this person is a pain in the butt. (laughs) I'm not talking about, I mean, we have tons of referrals, right? I'm talking about when I know in my heart and mind do not take this client on, but I do because of the the promise, yeah, you know, of more business. It has never worked out. <laughs> never. <laughs> never. All right. So where does this FOMO come from? So it it really, if you look at it, where it really comes from is not being able to clearly evaluate you know, if this project or meeting or event or whatever it is, is going to result in a positive experience for you. Right. Right. That's what it is. Because if you can look at a a situation or look at a client and you're like, this person's going to be a huge pain in the butt and you make that decision and you can see that, then you're not going to have any fear of missing out. Right. Right. So a lot of times it's just because we don't know, we haven't done the research 
And so we're like, oh man, I might miss out on something. Right. So the more you can really dive into it and make the decision. And then once you do that homework and make that decision, then you just need to forget about it. Yeah. And sometimes it's sometimes it's literally making the mistake. Yeah. And I like what you said. I think you said a meeting or an event. Yeah. Uh, an event is a great, great example. A lot of us go to different events, uh, you know, whether you're in the service industry or, you know, marketing industry, consulting industry, whatever that is, product industry, there are events out there. Yeah. And that is a, a way that a lot of people learn to network and, and learn to see what's out there and blah, 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 and get themselves out there. Well, there we do events like crazy. Yeah. We have done so many amazing and profitable events. And then we have done several <laughs> totally worthless, useless events. And the funny thing is, I'll admit it, the next year comes around and it's hard not to go back because you you think like, well, maybe it was last year. You start to convince yourself yeah. that maybe there was just a reason why it didn't work or you know whatever because of that FOMO, yeah. that fear of missing out. Well, what if there's that one connection or what if there's that one product or what if there's that one thing that's new this year that wasn't there last year so you do it maybe you do it two or three times and then you're like oh my gosh and so sometimes learning this is yeah. just literally through learning the mistake over and over and over again yeah but 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 then knowing when to call it quits, right? Exactly. And again, making that decision and then just forget about it. Just block it out yeah. like, okay, I'm done with that. I'm yep. not going to think about it. I'm not going to go back. Oh, man, I wonder if I should have yep. done this. No, it's over with. Okay, the other reason why people get into these obligations is they're people pleasers, right? <laughs> Someone comes to you and they say, hey, you know, could you do this? It would really help me out. Or, hey, I've got this project. I would love to have you, you know, work on it with me, blah, 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 right? And work on it with me means I have an idea, you go execute it, exactly. and then give me half the profit. Exactly. Trust me, that's what, that, <laughs> that's what they mean when they say that. Yeah, so, you know, that it's that, you know, peer pressure or that layer pressure that you want to please other people. And it could be pleasing partners, could be pleasing clients, yep, yep. you know, whoever it might be. It might be in your personal life, pleasing someone in your personal life. Yeah. Right. But you just don't want to say no to them um, because saying no to someone can be hard because we don't want to let them down. Yeah. And we're also worried about how, you know, this will. Well, here's the big thing. We're so worried about how this is going to affect them mm -hmm. that we never actually take a look at how it's going to affect us. Mm -hmm. And that's a big problem. Yeah. Right. Because we're like, oh, man, if I don't do this for this person, that's going to affect them this way. But right. we never look at it and go, oh, but if I do do this, it's going to stop me from doing this, this, and this. Yeah, and, we've, and we've, learned, we've learned that the hard way. Uh, we've got many a stories where Troy and I and Ron, yeah. back in the day, we are people pleasers. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we are. And, and I'm the most bulldog of the three for sure, but I still am a people pleaser to a degree. Uh, the longer we've done this, the better we've all gotten at it. But we experienced this so far that we allowed this whole people pleasing thing to go on way too long to where it actually ended up re like ruining partnerships and relationships that we had with people. Yeah. When a simple, if we would have just cut it off from the get go, it wouldn't have been a big deal. Right. If we would have just stopped it from the get go, it wouldn't have ruined anything or done anything um, in a negative sense. But we let it go on, and we and we well because we were trying to you know well I don't want to upset them and you know this <laughs> and that and da 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 da. That in the end, it made it worse. It was actually way worse, and it severed you know ties with several people that. You know, that we should have. And we were just trying to be good guys. We were yeah. just trying to be nice guys, you know? Exactly. But it's worse. It can be worse. Yep. So here's what you have to realize. That saying yes has a cost, right? There's only so much time and in your day, in your work schedule, in your personal life. And every time we say yes to one thing, we are inherently saying no yeah. to something else. Right. So when I say yes, I'm going to, you know, 
do this report for a client tonight, you know, and stay late at the office until eight o'clock to get this done for them because they really want this information. I'm saying no to spending time with my family. Yeah. So there's always a cost. Well, and you, <clears throat> excuse me, when you say yes to something, it then is going to even, you know, block potential opportunity that you never even will know was there. It can prevent potential opportunities that would have come if you wouldn't have said yes. Exactly. And to the degree of, I was just talking with my 17 year old daughter the other day and I was talking to her about dating and having an exclusive <laughs> boyfriend versus having several guys that she goes on dates with yeah. being available, right. To go out on dates and stuff. And I'm like, what you don't realize is when you have a boyfriend, it then blocks potential for other people to come and take you on dates and have more fun and, and things like that, even to the, just the smallest degree in life of like that, a 17-year-old yeah. girl who is like, well, but I, th no one's asked me on a date. Well, no one's going to ask you on a date because you have a boyfriend and everyone knows <laughs> you have a boyfriend. You know, And it's funny because now that she doesn't have a boyfriend, she's getting asked on dates yeah. because people are like, oh, well, yeah, you always, I was going to ask you on a date, but you were dating that boy. You had a boyfriend. So exactly. I mean, that's a simple example, but that's how it actually works in all of life. Yeah. including business. When you say yes to this, you are now unavailable to other things that could have come. Exactly. So what can that cost be? We've kind of hit on them, so I'm going to highlight them real quick. You know, the cost might be paid by less time with your family or your partner. It might be paid by your health and your rest and your mental health, right? You may be like, oh, I'm going to stay late and I'm going to work at late at the office every day this week and I'm not going to go to the gym, Yeah. right? And it's going to affect your health. It could be, like Trevor said, really important, missed opportunities mm -hmm. that would have had a greater ROI for your business, Yep. but you couldn't do it because you were too busy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do we fix this? Let's get into the solutions. It's really simple. There's a couple of things that, that you've always got to look at. First, you've got to evaluate, evaluate your commitments against your values, so anytime you're going to make a commitment, before you make that commitment, you need to uh, you need to look at it and compare it to your values. So what are your values? Your values are what's important to you. And then does this commitment fit inside of those values? Right. So for example, and a great example of that is, you know, what's important to me is spending time with my family. So does this commitment give me more time with my family? Does it give me less time with my family? If it's going to give me less time with my family, then it's not aligned with my values. Right. Right. And you're going to have lots of values. You don't have one value. You're going to have a whole list of these are my values. Right. But it needs to fit in there. And if it doesn't, if it's going contrary to that, you need to think about, do I really want to do this? Right. The other one is you need to evaluate these commitments against your goals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Your goals are different than your values. So what are your goals for your business, for your personal life? And then does this commitment get you closer to those goals? Or is it going to take away from the time that you need to actually achieve those goals? So again, like a perfect example is I was talking to someone the other day in the service industry and they're like, man, I, you know, I just, I don't want to work on Saturdays anymore. My goal is to make enough money Monday through Friday mm -hmm. that I don't have to work on Saturdays anymore. And, um, so then that, you know, that's the point, like that's one of his goals. So then he has to look at whenever he has a new commitment come up, you know, is this going to help me get towards that goal or is it going to help, or is it going to push me away from my goal? Right. Right. So meaning that if it's something that's not going to generate revenue in his business, but it's going to take up time in his week and force him to make up that, that revenue on Saturdays then it's not a good commitment. Totally. Right? Okay. So those are ways that you could, you could look at it and then you can fix whether you say yes or no to those obligations. Anything else you want to add, Trevor, before we hit the homework? No, let's hit homework. I think that's good. I think people get it. It's there, there are things to say yes to and then there are definitely things to say no to. And again, I just want to reiterate, sometimes it takes experiencing <laughs> those things, saying yes to the wrong things to then know what you're going to say no to in the future, right? Yep. So homework for this week, look at your current commitments and determine if there is one or two 
that you need to cut out and start working on saying no when an obligation does not align with your values or goal. Right? All right. Do so just say no. Back to the old <laughs> dare. Just say no, man. There you go. Right? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for spending another week with us at So Tell Us Time. We will see you guys next Tuesday, just like every Tuesday. And we hope you guys have a sensational rest of your week. Oh.